Hello my friends, if you like my work please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel or hit the notification bell to be informed about new videos. I'd just like to say thank you to all my patrons, please join them if you can, the link is in the description below. Today's episode and the whole series will be a little different than usual, I will call it Controlled Chaos. That's all for the introduction, let's get to the point. This is another model from my collection that I bought to build a specific project. This time an old dragon about which I had a pretty good opinion until I started making this model. Well, we have here standard color box, large instruction and parts kit on grey spruce, plus rubber trucks that I'm going to use. Of course additional decals, a small photo etched plate and transparent parts. Everything is nice because it's dragon but... Ok, before I get to complaining a few words about my idea. Some time ago I found this photo and immediately decided that it was the perfect idea to create a small diorama. This destroyed Sherman is perfect for that. I came across the model quite quickly on the modeling market and that's how this project began. Don't be surprised that I don't show how I built this model because there is nothing to show here. Just a quick build, some photocopying, a few pieces of wire, swapping the machine gun for a metal one and that's all. The only thing that annoyed me during the construction of this kit was the quality of the parts. Maybe I am too used to the current standards but what is in this model is a nasty plastic mass in some places. I realized that this model is a dozen or so years old but as I remember Dragon was quite high in the entire stake of producers even with essential errors. That's why I was surprised by the quality or rather the lack of it. But somehow I managed. I built the entire hull in one day. I did a little more work on the turret. After gluing the mounted cover which was held in place with two rubber bands, I started to connect the two parts of the turret. It wasn't perfect so I sanded the edges a bit. Gluing was a little easier but it was still certain that after drying I would have to work with these surfaces. The rubber bands passed the test for the second time. After the glue dried I started cutting off the excess with a knife and sanding with abrasive sponge. It took some time but it was necessary to make the model look good enough. As you can see the producer did some work but for me it's still not enough. That's why I used VMS glue to soften the surface and additionally damage it. I know that brush bristles are not a strong tool but here it was enough because the glue worked quite aggressively and the surface of the plastic was very soft. Leaving the turret to dry I started to prepare the green stuff to make delicate traces of connecting the two parts of it. I put the rolled thin sausages on the surface and pressed them into the rough surface using a toothpick. Then using a hobby knife I cut them to the right width and using the toothpick again shaped them to the satisfactory appearance. 
Okay my friends, if you like what I do, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click like and write a comment. This will surely be very helpful. As if that wasn't enough, I also covered a few places with green stuff, creating irregular shapes and pressing the mass as much as possible into the surface. I used a power drill and a standard drill bit to make small marks. I run them almost parallel to the surface, making small traces. It's best to test it yourself on some invisible part of the model. A little plastic glue is enough to align the edges. As you can see the effect is very good and close to the real one. You can also use an ordinary skewer and carve a few scratches in the softened plastic. Same here, just wipe the edges with glue. The effect is as good as the ones made with power drill, isn't it? When the green stuff was harder I covered it again with glue, trying to soften the plastic and unify the edges. The model is almost ready and I'm just waiting for the antenna sockets because the model doesn't have them and the picture clearly shows the antenna on the roof of the turret. Looking at the photo I began to wonder what barrel is in this vehicle. It seems to me that there was some thickening there but after a deeper analysis I found that I was staying at the bar without any muzzle brake or any other element. And look at the quality of this bar. The exit hole is rather not in the middle. It's supposed to be like this? I don't know. Without wasting any time I started to prepare the base. I will use a frame from an old picture because it's perfect for this model. The size of the square on which I will present the model is enough to properly fix the model, make mud and put some figure or maybe even a damaged telegraph pole. But first I prepared the walls from tin balsa. A mixture of PVA glue and black CA glue is ideal for strong bonding of wooden elements. On a piece of paper I outlined the planned layout of the model and the edges of the mud and water. Let's see how it turns out in reality.
Cutting in balsa is very easy but it's also easy to damage a thin board. That's why you need to do it with sensitivity and control the work of the hobby knife. There will be a big puddle in the front of the Sherman so the edges have to be even because I'm going to pour the resin here. I use the handle of the file to guide the knife evenly. Simple and effective solution. I also reduced the upper edges where there will be mud because after fitting the model I turned out that these walls are definitely too high. I used styrofoam to fill the base. First I hot wired the base which perfectly filled the entire base. Then I cut smaller pieces and slowly began to fit them to the base. I glued the main elements firmly together with glue and toothpicks and I glued the smaller pieces which build the uneven surface one by one. In this way after applying the mat I will have a very uneven surface. I sealed the edges with glue especially where the resin is to appear. After putting the model the whole thing looks pretty good. I won't mention the fact that I usually disassemble the model into its first part because if you've been watching my projects for some time you know how I usually work. I glued two nuts to the inside of the hole and started to tighten the large bolts as handles. Earlier I sanded one side so that the glue would bond better. As always they will stay there permanently because there is no point in unstacking them. Of course it can be done using the, the bonder but the question is what for? As I mentioned in the previous episodes there is no antenna on the turret but I bought the appropriate T-Rex set and now I can mount one element. The whole set will serve me for a long time if I build some American vehicles and it's nice that there are bent elements here which can be used to give the right look uh, to the vehicle. Now that the glue has dried I put the screws in and I have nice grips ready. As you can see both elements are holding very well. Before I start painting the whole model was cleaned with model degreaser. It was necessary the more that I didn't plan to paint it with a primer. There was one reason, I was going to use Tamiya paint so I was pretty sure that without the primer they would stick to the surface very well anyway. The whole procedure takes a few minutes and I can start painting. The product evaporates very quickly so it has the advantage over washing the model with water and soap. As a base color I used olive drab but I added a bit of lighter shade to it. That's the difference between the two colors. I put two thin layers on the entire model which was enough to cover all the necessary surfaces. Looking for some modeling materials I found masks for painting discolorations in my collection. As far as I remember I bought them quite a long time ago but completely forgot about them so now is the perfect time to use them. For painting I used the base color without the addition of lighter shade. The effect is very nice. 
I did the same with a lighter shade. The most important thing is that the surface doesn't look too motley. Although on the one hand you have to remember that weathering will mitigate any painting effects quite effectively. Having the photo of the real vehicle I have the impression that it's painted in a two-tone camo with black spots. I also looked at the instruction from the model and decided to do something similar. Of course this is a free interpretation of both pictures and instructions, but I'm sure it will be interesting. To paint the black spots I used not black. I painted all the spots without stencils. I did it pretty quickly because it wasn't too difficult. It's just as easy to join my group on Patreon, just check out the 7 days free trial and enjoy with the content. You can surf on my page with no limits, watch each episode with no adverts, download all superb high resolution pictures, watch progress shots, check stories with unpublished in other medias models, read the articles and enjoy other benefits. Just try for free, this way you can check whether you like what I publish for my patrons or not. And this is the perfect moment to say thank you to all my wonderful patrons, please don't forget that you can be one of them. Ok, back to the content. To make some light shade on black I added neutral grey, applying it as a delicate discoloration on each stain. I use the rest of the paint to make some base color on the rubber tracks that I'm going to use in this project. Before I started painting the markings I covered the places where they should appear with the chipping medium from VMS. For painting I used stencils from ET model. They also got lost somewhere in my drawers and now I remembered that I have them. I once used them on my T29 and now they will be able to serve humanity again. The effect I wanted to achieve is a kind of imperfection which is perfectly visible when painting a star on the engine plate. I just wanted the paint to gently flow under the stencil. Yes, exactly you heard it correctly. It adds realism in my opinion and looks great. And it's not my invention but I've seen American markings painted like this with imperfections in some pictures from World War II. The vehicle is quite richly marked but this is not a coincidence either because if I take into account the further steps I intended to take with this model, their number will not be as visible as now before weathering. All markings have been properly treated with water and brush to activate the chipping medium and damage the paint in a controlled way. All in all it was a very pleasant job and the results are very nice. Painting the details in this case was also not a rocket science. I used black and rubber black on the wheels and on the armament and on the spare trucks. Of course I added a bunch of other colors for details such as a board in the front, periscopes, lamps and others. I also painted elements polished by trucks. In the photo the tank looks freshly damaged so there is no rust on it. I want to do the same on this model. I brightened up some elements on the whole model using a light shade of green. It was a good move because it adds some light to the overall look. In addition I used the proven trick and painted the screw heads and a few small elements silver. The weld lines have also been slightly brightened.
At the end I painted the silver stripe on the barrel. Earlier I masked this part with tape. I didn't want to do it with airbrush out of sheer laziness. That's why I used the brush and after removing the tape I gently sanded the edge of the color. This way the model is completely ready to start weathering which I plan to show you in the next episode. Now before I finish the last thing I did in this session. I covered the surface of the diorama with first layer of matte and to be precise with the VMS product with a cool name Smart Matte. It's very interesting product, quite dry and not too sticky but enough to apply it on the surface and leave it to dry. As I said the first layer is the base for the second where I will form the final look based on the photo. But before I start doing it I need to prepare the model and details that will make the background. I'm talking about some remnants of the crew's equipment and tank elements scattered around. In addition I planned the figures so they also need to be at least pre-prepared for their places. Now take a look at how cool this product is. You can clearly see how it behaves when I hold it in my fingers and how easy it is to remove it with an ordinary piece of paper tissue. That's what I did removing the remains from the walls of the diorama which was trivial now but after drying it could be much more difficult. As always the first thing I do on the model before wash is a thin layer of glossy varnish. For the Sherman I used VMS product which can be used in airbrush without any dilution. Quick application on the model and after a few minutes I can start applying the dark brown wash. Of course it was primarily used to emphasize details and depressions which in turn led to adding a 3D look to the model but I also used it for two other effects. Firstly I use it to build the effect of dirt and large stains. It's best seen here on the turret. The space between the hatches was perfect for that. Of course it's worth remembering to use the accelerator which speeds up the work. While applying the wash I didn't waste the product and gave it quite generously to the model. I think it's clearly shown here. The second effect or rather the third after the wash and dirty stains was making vertical streaks. It's very simple, just a combination of wash and thinner and you can have fun with applying, moving or removing individual streaks. And now a bit of philosophy. The whole procedure wasn't accidental. In combination of all these effects I used starting with stencil painting through two colored camo and the effects that I just applied. I wanted my model to look very dusty and dirty and this is the look I built using the procedures you just saw and will see in a moment. Now when all surfaces are completely dry you can clearly see streaks and dirty spots. For the first layer of matte I used brown earth, pigment jockey and universal weathering carrier which is necessary to get the right effects. It may seem that I'm working with these products very inappropriately but I know exactly what my goal is and what I want to achieve by using pigment jock in this way. Here is the effect on one of the three sets of wheels. You can say that it's a strong wash combined with a filter. I worked exactly the same with these products on the lower part of the hull making a suitable base for further mud that will appear there in a moment. Thinning the paint even more I applied it all over the hull to dust all the surfaces. The effect is exactly what I wanted and is another building block to the whole weathering construction.
Now you can clearly see the difference between a dirty hull and a relatively clean turret, but I will change that in a moment. I apply the same strongly diluted product to the entire element, taking care of the proper distribution of color in places where it will be most desirable. After drying the turret fits perfectly with the hull and now forms one whole vehicle. The dirting isn't over yet. The machine gun, which will also be an important element of the overall look, also gets the right amount of dust. In fact, weapons also get dirty, rusted and dusted. I'm sure weapons looked like this during the war, especially when carried on tanks and other military vehicles. The second layer of mud will be a mix of damp earth from AK Interactive with a texture builder from VMS. After mixing, depending on the proportion, we get mud that is ready to be applied to the model. It's worth using different tools and different methods of application, thanks to which we will get interesting looking pieces of mud with different sizes and textures. It's worth checking it yourself and choosing the appropriate methods. Wanting to prepare the entire chassis, I started with these surfaces, dirtying the model so as not to leave unfinished places that may be visible after attaching the model to the base. Take your time and take it easy to build the right looking mat. It's worth remembering that covering the entire chassis with a uniform layer of mat as it happens in reality, especially when the mat is wet, will not look good on the model. It's much better to do it sparingly with less mud, because in this way we will achieve better visual results. I know that it will not reflect the real look of the vehicle, but you can now take advantage of my experience and trust me, I know what I am talking about because I love dirty vehicles and almost all my models have mud on them in different versions. That's why you can see the earlier layers here and I am going to leave them visible to accomplish what I just say. In addition to the bottom surfaces, I also apply mud to the sides of the hull, which seems natural on tanks, but it's often overlooked by modelers. I know that everyone builds and paints the model as he likes, so I'm not going to criticize or judge anyone. I'm fine from it, despite my experience in this matter. Modeling is supposed to be fun, but if you want to make more realism, just think about that. Ok, the first layer of mud is in place and I can now glue the wheels on. Generally I could wait with it before I applied heavy mud, but you know. I left the application of pigment jacket on the tracks and immediately applied damp earth in the light version and in the heavy version with the addition of pure texture from VMS, but that's in a moment. First I stained the space wiped by the road wheels with pigment, which I rub directly into the places where the wheels work the most and wipe everything that is there. I polish the teeth of the tracks gently with a pencil.
Putting trucks on the model wasn't a quick job because such rubber trucks don't want to cooperate too much. I used black CA glue and finally after a few dozen minutes I had a ready suspension with all wheels in place and a properly formed truck. The third layer of mud is already mentioned heavy version. For this I used muddy ground from Acre Interactive. I want this mud not to cover all my previous work but to be the freshest layer that appears on the tank. Therefore its amount will be much smaller. This doesn't change the fact that it must also play an appropriate role in building the whole look. Note that I apply it in small quantities taking care of the proper arrangement on individual elements. In general the truth is that mud appears in such unexpected places on vehicles that it's sometimes difficult to imagine its path. I know it sounds weird, but that's how it is. Just spend some time looking for photos on the internet where you will undoubtedly find confirmation of what I'm saying. Still remembering about the trucks, I added a wash with a product heavily diluted with water to unify the trucks and wheels elements. And of course heavy mud also appear on the sides of the hull, but I don't think this needs explaining. Just remember that it's important to keep the proper amount of it, which shortly speaking should be smaller than the previous layer. And this is how I build the muddy look of my Sherman to put it in the mud in a moment. Continuing work on the diorama, I finally put the model in the right position and glued it to the base. This may be surprising for you, but I used PVA glue to make the model stick well to the surface. The first reason is the main material of the base and as you remember I used the foam, so the use of some aggressive glue could damage its structure. Secondly, this glue gave me a lot of time to properly set the model and I didn't to hurry up. Thirdly, this glue did the job as a seal for the water that I will be pouring on the base in a moment. Trucks that are visible in the picture also had to appear on my base, of course. I fixed two short pieces with pins and covered them with glue. It may not look very aesthetic, but it does the job and as a result it will be completely invisible, so I didn't bother to fix these elements too much. When the model was sitting properly, I glued the turret firmly and using the previously imprinted place in the ground. Leaving the model for a while and giving time for the glue to dry, I started to prepare the figures. At this stage I needed to set them on the mat to see how they will present. To tell you the truth, I don't have many options and in my opinion this is the best setup I could come with for these figures and for this surface. Once I knew where the figures would be, I started to apply a second layer of mud. Of course I used the same product from VMS. I was wondering about the trucks and some visible mapping of the tank's slide on the uneven terrain, but on the other hand it could have driven directly into the bomb crater. All the time I was hesitating over the final appearance, but I decided that it will stay in the form it is now without coming up with strange justifications and undefined appearance. I filled large gaps with a sponge so as not to waste the product on plugging the holes. It passed the test in 100%.
Ok, going back to work I repositioned the figures and made some footprints. Not much and actually could have done more. Well, nobody is perfect. I also attached a piece of towing cable to diversify the surface of the mud. At the back of the vehicle I threw some crates imitating the crew's abandoned storage. In addition a carelessly spread tarp on the rear and a little one lower will add drama and more different colors to the whole appearance. I made the rope from a piece of wire pulled from a thick cord. Its advantage was an interesting braid that imitated a rope well. The size was good too, not too thick but not too thin either. Of course after gluing it I painted it in a light core and did a delicate wash to emphasize its structure. To improve the appearance of the mud I sprinkled it with fine sand and stones. No big deal but it added variety to the mud structure. I put the stones in the mud and flooded the whole thing with sand and ballast freeze. It was enough for everything to stick properly and not fall off when turning the stand. The first mud color was Dump Earth from AK Interactive. Perfect for this mud in my opinion and the product soaked into the structure nicely and gave a very good shade. It was a mistake to paint the bottom of the puddle because I did it mindlessly forgetting that it's enamel. The foam was slightly damaged but luckily it wasn't too much. Muddy ground diluted with a small amount of tap water is the second color of the mud. I applied it primarily in the holes but in some places it was the dominant color. To make a puddle I used the product from AK Interactive. The first layer was about 3mm and after a short fight with air bubbles I left it to dry. Generally they are the biggest problem because you can see them very well on the surface of the water. However the ones that were left and I couldn't pull them out will be covered with the next layers. The color of this product is perfect for creating puddles and reservoirs like this.
I poured the second layer not straight from the container but first pouring the resin into a plastic container to check if there were no air bubbles there. So slow pouring also helped to avoid them. Another problem has arisen. After drying the resin shrank a bit leaving on slightly edges. It didn't surprise me at all and I started to wonder what to do about this problem. The solution turned out to be very simple and in a moment you will see what I did. One note. After pouring the resin you need to work on it, helping it flow into all nooks and crannies. Because as it is known where it's not needed the resin will of course flow without any problems, but in places where it needs to settle naturally of course there is no such intention. Alright, pouring 3 layers took me about 36 hours in total because after each layer I left the whole thing to dry. When the last layer was already poured I decided to add some variety in the form of dry leaves. These laser cut pieces are perfect for enhancing a body of water. First of all I covered minor imperfections with them but I also started to build the right look of the whole thing. It's worth remembering that they usually gather along the shores forming a compact mass. They float on the surface but also below the surface so it's worth submerging them to make a little 3D effect. In my opinion I managed to get a nice effect and the water took on life. Despite the nice work with the leaves, the edges don't look good. As I mentioned a moment ago, the solution turned out to be very simple. I cut the edges of the balsa together with the excess of the resin. Surprisingly, it was still quite flexible. It was hard to cut, but it didn't matter much because in a moment this unevenness will be covered by transparent water gel. Thanks to it, small waves will be created on the entire surface. Despite the fact that the water in the picture is rather smooth, I decided on such a solution. Firstly to cover uneven edges and secondly to give it a bit of interesting look. Sometimes you have to add a bit of yourself to improve the reality we want to show on the model. Applying this product is very simple. Irregularity is the key to success. After drying on one layer, you can add another to enrich or complete the surface.
some trivial work on finishing the base also needs to be done. Black paint with PVA glue is ideal for painting balsa. The glue combined with the paint clogs the micro pores in the boards. Two layers is enough. And the frame was previously painted with black spray paint. Here too, two layers do the job. Figures covered with a black primer are already waiting for their turn. I don't consider myself a super figure painter, so I won't bother you by showing how I do it. To paint the camo that is on each of the four figures I used the AK book about Waffen SS uniforms. I tried to add some variety so I used different camo patterns based on the pictures in this book. The only thing I will draw your attention to is the matte weathering I did on the figures using the same products that were used for painting the matte. I think it was a good step because thanks to this the figures are properly unified with the ground on which they stand. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. And about the book, the link to the bookshelf episode is in the description below. Setting up the characters of the story wasn't difficult. Each has a glued pin that holds it in the right place and facilitates possible disassembly. The ground is not as hard as stone, so sticking a pin is not a problem. At the end I decided to prepare a plate with the name of the project stylized as a piece of armor. Of course I painted and weathered it as on the model and as a result I have a nice looking element on the base. Ok, the project has come to the end. I am very pleased with the final result. I managed to get a nice atmosphere and it seems to me that in this case a small number of elements is the added value of this diorama. Let me know what do you think about it. Of course, if you like what I do, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click like and write a comment. This will surely be very helpful. For my next project I have prepared Takom's Hetzer with some nice upgrades, so prepare the snacks and drinks for next Monday. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!